Sure. My name is Dustin Brogdon and I live in Macon County. Um, and, and when I, I, I guess I need to start from the beginning here. I'm I, I married, I married in, I've, I've been born and raised in Macon County. My, I've been here my whole life, but I married in 2003 and she came from a farming background, tobacco farmers, particularly. Okay. So I, I jumped right in. I, I love farming, uh, everything about it. So with that being said, we, we, um, we had our first child in 2006. Her name is Abby. And in, let's see, she was, she was, I think it was around 2013. Um, she was diagnosed or she, she developed epilepsy. Okay. And, and the seizure started with her and, um, we, you know, so we, here we went to neurology and neurology, we started down pharmaceutical road. And when we started down uh, pharmaceutical road, nothing helped, nothing helped. And it, we were, we were always in the less than 1%, you know, we're going to develop these rare side effects or these, uh, side effect you know may end up in a burn center because these rashes on your body and nothing was working so long story short they never did diagnose her with a particular type of epilepsy till about a year ago uh, all they could tell us was they were refractory which means by definition medicine doesn't affect them okay so we you, this this is you know, so we, we were just trial and error. He was just shotgunning from the hip, these pharmaceuticals and nothing was working. Well, finally he said, there's this thing called CBD, you know, maybe give it a try. And so, uh, you know, and the first thing I did, this was, this was probably 2017 maybe, and I Googled it, a pot leaf came up. I said, oh Lord, I'm not gonna give my daughter marijuana you know, and uh, so my wife, this, we, we were talking about it and I, I did some more homework and I, I said, told my wife, I said, this is, this is a completely different animal. This is, you know, so the more, you know, I realized what it was and, and the benefits of epilepsy that CBD proposed. So we tried it, we tried it and, you know, we had to, he told us, you know, there's a dose that's going to help her. Lo and behold, we got to a point where it was because she was terrible. She was having 10 to 12 seizures a day. Um, we were homebound. You know, it was just uh, it was it was a terrible, terrible time in our life. Um, but we, we got to a point with the CBD where we flipped the switch and um, it went from 10 to 12 seizures a day to one to two a month. And th y'all, that's life changing. You, you know, you can then go to Ingalls as a family, or you can go to a ball game, or you can go to a movie at that point where you can't when a child's having 10 to 12 seizures a day. So with all that being said, and, and, and I'd you know, she came from a farming background. Um, I, I looked at my father-in-law and I, I said, I, you know, I would love for Abby, I would love to be able to farm this stuff you know, and if we could process this and her take what we can grow, you know, right here in these fields, right here in Macon County, you know, we can do this. And, and so we put all our heads together and, uh, you know, a, a cousin of hers. And so there was four of us said, we're, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to grow this. We can do this. And uh, so we started the Abby's Angels company and you now, now, you know, we're, we're going from, in the field to the shelf. So, uh, so we, we started in, in 19, we grew in 2019 was the first year we grew. Uh, we started with 5,000 plants, um, you know, or we, we started with 5,000 clones and we, uh, we found, we, we, we hunted for a long time for a reputable source for clones. And, and my, I can, I'm going to express to everybody out there, whether you, if you're wanting to grow, I, I highly recommend doing your homework as far as these people that are selling seeds or clones because you're you do some homework because you're going to get there's some people out there that'll sell you a seed for a dollar there's some that'll sell you a seed for a nickel now the germination rates 
where that's going to show up or your clones genetics is where that's going to show up. Um, so we paid, we paid, uh, we paid $5 a clone for the first, the first year we grew in 19, which the market was high then long story short, it was a really good product. It, we ended up getting yielding about 21 and a half percent CBD. It was Bay Ox. Um, and, and we had a really good yield. We yielded about 7,000 pounds out of 5,000 plants, uh, um, on about six acres. Um, we planted on, I think we planted on five by five. Um, we planted May the 15th is when we planted. We, uh, and I don't, in 19, it may was here. It was a terrible drought. And we thought, Oh Lord, you know, it, all the way into June, the middle of June, last of June, it hadn't rained yet. And we thought, Lord, you know, they're, they're going to die. They're going to die. We, so we set up an overhead irrigation system. <clears throat> Little did we know at the time, all we did was create work. We created a lot, a lot of work cultivation wise. We planted on bare ground, no plastic. And so we were just cultivating. All we did was promote weed growth uh, because by nature, the plant does not at all like water. Um, so we learned really quick, you know, less is better as far as irrigation. So we did that. Um, then, then we got into where we were, you know, another thing I want, I want to say right now is, is, I wish I would have known then the resources we have with the North Carolina Department of Agriculture. Fantastic, fantastic. Our extension agent, Joe Deal, uh, goes above and beyond in, in whatever he can do to help. I, I mean, he goes home and works off the clock to try to help us farmers, you know, do better. And and these guys are here for this. And, and that's, you know, so if you, any small little big questions they 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 may not have an answer but if i bet you they'll hunt deep and wide to try to find one to help us that's what you know so i can't so from day one if you decide to farm this decide to grow it use your resources use your resources soil samples um yes you know um tissue samples please please that you, your plant it'll it'll tell you what it wants what it needs what it doesn't need um you know, and then, then we got into the whole, but we, di we didn't even realize what well, Joe would come out. Joe, he, he did, but we, there's, there's so many resources to the Department of Agriculture and your extension agent can help you with all those as far as, but anyway, we sort of, we didn't find that out till about harvest time, unfortunately, with the tissue samples. But anyway, so we, we probably went into June, July and, you know, developed the, the brown russet mites. You know, what do we do? What do we do? Again, if you do your homework with the clones and the seeds, there, these people that that are growing seeds or growing clones should be able to develop a spray regiment or some kind of regiment to give you as a farmer to say, you know, this depending on what area in the state you're in, this is a good possibility you're going to develop russet mites, you know, or or Fusarium, Botrytis, whatever it may be, and, and they should give you some examples or some, so, and it's all omni approved, or it should be, needs to be, that to battle some of this stuff it, it, as far as this spray regiment. But I guess as being a human being, you know, June 15th, the spray regiment said spray this, do this. Well, I guess as a human, you don't see a problem. What do we need to address? There's no problem. Well, then, then when you see a problem, first of July, we've got russet mites. Well, I, I, to be honest with you, it's not too little, too late. But you're fighting an uphill battle at that point. Whether it's russet mites, wire worms, spider mites, caterpillars, Fusarium botrytis, any kind of fungus mold. It was an uphill battle. It was a I mean, and and it's an it was an uphill battle for us to 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 fight through that on year one, with four of us, four people trying to farm five thousand plants, and and with just on bare ground with cultivation. So 
when we got when we got to spray it when we we got to the regiment we, we we beat it off we fought it off whatever and we <clears throat> did a pretty good job i mean we had uh, on five thousand plants from may the 15th and we started harvesting the last day of september and it took us six weeks to harvest we we averaged about 900 man hours in that in that amount of time and it's a very very labor intensive plant i mean it is it just I mean, there's ways to cut back on labor, and we found that in year two, but we didn't know on year one. And the biggest thing we underestimated as a grower was drying infrastructure. Coming from, uh, like I say, my father-in-law's background was a tobacco farmer, you know, old pole barns to dry tobacco, you know, we'd heard – Yep, that you can grow it, you can dry it fine, you know, in, in, in open sheds where the air can get to it. And yes, that works fantastic. I've got to admit, because we've we've tried it a couple of different ways. That is by far the best way we have found to dry it thus far. With that being said, you can't stuff five thousand plants in a fifty by fifty barn. Um, it's not going to happen. We had that stuff hanging. I mean, we had it hanging everywhere. We had it in tractor sheds and barns and bathrooms and everywhere we could find. But um, but we made it work, and we just found a cycle to where we could, you, you know, it took about seven to ten days to dry down to the moisture content that we wanted it, you know, to get it out and bucket and you know fill it back up with fresh hemp. Um, but it, so what we did after we we, we had we had seven thousand pounds of biomass that at that time you know we 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 were hunting buyers and some of those buyers will promise you the moon until you know it comes time to to cough it up and then there's always some kind of loophole or legality that they can get out of you know whether you did or didn't do something or meet a certain percentage or whatever it may be. So we decided to go vertically integrated where we got a group of investors. We invested in a, a cold ethanol processor and, you know, to take it to crude. And then as far as the crude, we, we, we don't in-house, but we take it to one step farther to distillate. And all our products are distillate based um, products. You know, the, and and again, those those guys were spot on. the The retail end was is a lot like to start with. It's trying to drive a square peg through a round hole. Just the website, creating a website is fine. It's it's yes, it's banking. We went through four or five banks before we found one here, a local, you know, that would work with us. Then then it's a, a credit card merchant. We got shut down again by PayPal, Square, the whole, you know, so, and we were able, finally able to find a merchant that would work with us to where we can, you know, now we're online and, and everything's moving fine, but there's still a lot of red flags that go up with certain different things. And I, it's frustrating. It's very frustrating. So if you're going to try to go retail, just know that it's, 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 Start now. If you're planning on trying to get something going, I, I, I would start now to planning for the fall or planning for the winter or what it, because it's going to be a battle to try to find banking or credit card merchants. Um, we, got, we got all that set up. We did. We so and it, and it, so in year, what we realized was we had 600 kilos of crude oil, you know, and as far as we didn't need. Six, as far as products and stuff go, we didn't need 600 kilos of crude. You know, that would do a pretty good while as far as products is concerned. Um, so we said, you know, as again, the two gentlemen before, we, we wanted to try to, to get into the smokable market. So we downsized from 5,000 plants to 500 plants. We only grew about a third of an acre, half an acre this year, or, or in 2020. And um, it was, and we also didn't plant until June the 15th. I said, let's try this a little different. Let's wait three to four weeks on planting, you know, just to see, again, we planted Bayox. Um, and then by, 
and in the middle of August, we started sending off our samples. Um, and by the middle of September, we were at 23 and a half percent, which just went to show me that extra month of growing from May the 15th to the first or second week in June was just extra labor, extra expense that we didn't need to spend to still create a quality product. Well, also with, with a lot less plants, 10 times as less plants, we could care for those plants 10 times more, if that makes sense. Uh, you know, instead of trying to trying to battle through 5,000 by hand, you know, you're, you're, you're working through 500 and can give it more care. And, and so I don't know if that's what created, because in 20, we, it grew 23 and a half percent CBD. Um, Again, we didn't irrigate anything. We we didn't we didn't put drip down. We didn't we just let Mother Nature do her thing. And every time it did rain, we were right behind it, cultivating it, just to keep weeds down, you know, and keep just just to keep the airflow through there without any weeds or anything coming up in between it, um, you know. And everything it worked out so much better. So with all that being said, <clears throat> we took. A quality, we took less to make a better quality product, in my opinion. So less is more, if that, that may sound cliche, um, or personally, um, also depending on, depending on what the farmer wants to do with it. As far as personally and our business is concerned, we do not need the inventory of growing, you know, five, 10,000 pounds of biomass. We don't need it because the market is just saturated so saturated with biomass it's so saturated with crude oil it's saturated with everything you know to and i i firmly believe that one day i don't know when if the fda will ever get behind us farmers and and, and just the whole industry and and get involved in this where you go to the grocery store and see a gallon of milk that's got cbd in it or a jar of peanut butter that's got cbd in it or a pepsi cola it's got CBD in it. Then I personally think the numbers will come back. The market will come back because then the, the the need for tens of thousands of pounds of biomass, you know, to supply Mayfield dairy or, or, or Pepsi Cola, you know, with, with this, this oil, this CBD, you know, per, that's, I personally feel that that'll drive the market back up, you know, cause I think a lot of farmers have got a bad taste in their mouth over the last couple of years, because the market's just been a steady decline and, and a lot of farmers took a bath in this and, and you don't want to ever say the word again. Um, you know, and I, that, and I think a lot of people, it's, it's, it's uneducation also, as far as you say hemp, just like I did when I, when I Googled CBD from my daughter's epilepsy, I saw a pot leaf, I saw a marijuana plant. Well, you know, so it's stereotypical here, here, you know, I mean, because I, I was born and raised a Christian, I, I, you know, and, and, but people see you're, you're growing hemp, you're growing hemp, you know, it looks just like marijuana, it smells just like marijuana, you know, so, but they're uneducated on how it will help, what good this plant can do this. There's so much good in this plant. And I'm so thankful to be able to farm it, to be able to grow it, to help my daughter, number one. And, and, and listen, I'm going to shout it from the rooftops that, that that it will, it is, it is such a benefactor for epilepsy um, because it, or it has been for her. And they finally diagnosed her with LGS, Lennox Gestalt syndrome. And the, there's no medicines out there that will help that, you know, but CBD oil has been a lifesaver for us. It's been a godsend. And, you know, I'm just so thankful to grow it, to help her and to help other people, you know, with, with the same problem she has. And, um, that's, that's the main reason we got into it. You know, our business is, is doing well and the retail ends fine. There's a lot of, there's a battle every day. You know, anybody in retail's gonna say that because there is, but um, it, it's just been, it's, it's been amazing to know, you know, and, and even my daughter, she gets out there, she, she was born with Down syndrome but, and this developed the epilepsy, but she gets out there when we're, when we're bucking it and harvesting it and hanging it and drying it and shucking it and whatever and gets out there and helping it just it uh it warms my heart to see her 
working in this when in turn it's helping her and that's 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 what i signed up for and i'm going to continue to sign up for like i say as far as the scale of what we're doing you know we drop and this year you know we may even grow less than 500 just for one maybe the smokable and two you know just for for um you know the crude and to keep our product line going being vertically integrated um but i it's it's it was a lot of work. It was a lot of work, no doubt about it. It's probably the most work I've ever done in my life. And I love to work hard, but it's it's satisfying. It's, I don't know what the word is, but gratification out of out of doing it, you know, because it, it's just, I just wish there was, as far as big government could get behind us farmers and be able to help drive a market, you know, for, for for the farmers that are, whether they're going to wholesale it or retail it or, you know, whatever they're going to do, 1 million percent, if, if you want to think about getting into this, you got to listen to what those guys are saying. I'm going to say the same thing. Know where you're going before you even poke it in the ground. Know where you're going. Know where that thing's going. Know where you're going to sell it. Know where your market is. Whatever you want to do, because uh, that that's 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 the end game. And, and you know, but that's the way the market's looking now, it's not financially, the return on investment isn't, it's not a scratch a lottery ticket and hit the winning pot of gold. It's, you know, but, but depending on what you know, where you're going, know where you're going. Um, but with that being said, I, I, I appreciate y'all's time and, and I appreciate Joe and all, all you NCDA guys that, that help us farmers and, you know, you're such a huge resource and I can't tell the farmers enough to be able to use your resources. They're there, they're there and they're good at what they do. So, but thank you guys for your time. Well, thank you, Dustin. And, and we're re learning right along with you. The, these sessions, we in extension with the Department of Agriculture and the university all learn just as much from you all right now as as hopefully you're learning from us because it's a new crop. Yeah. None of us knew how it was going to respond. And there are things that you just said that I've not heard before. Okay. Um, you're taking kind of this hands-off approach is very different from what you're hearing other growers say, for example, what um, Joe Evans was sharing. So um, the irrigation issue is a little bit different. So this is, where I think we've got to really watch in our state and particularly in our mountains, we've got these microclimates scattered around here that we've got to keep a close eye on because what works in one area won't necessarily work in the other. But I do have to ask you, those are really high CBD levels. Yeah, we were, we, we, yeah, <laughs> those are, we, we were uh, blessed with the levels. We really were. You know, I, I, and 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 everybody, kids, and my my father-in-law, they say he can grow grass on a rock, and um, you know, but he, because he, he pushed us like a, like a like a like a like a mule. I mean, worked us like a mule, but it was all for the best because you know he he it was old school. Everything he wanted to do was old school. I mean, when we're going through five thousand hemp plants with a gooseneck hoe, it's a long day, you know, but. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know why, you know, and, and our, listen, our clone guys, we, we use triangle hemp in, in, out of Raleigh, fantastic group of people helped us a million percent, you know, with that, we had so many questions and they would help us, you know, do this, try this, use this. And, you know, with all that being said, we were really blessed with the, with our CBD percentages. We really were. That's great. And that there's compliance. So yeah. good yeah. job on that. Yeah. Katie, do we have any questions specifically for Dustin? Uh, we do. Um, someone asked, who is the merchant provider? Um, I, I'll be honest with you. I don't handle that end of it. I know I, I, he's not, they're out of Florida and his name's Austin. I, I'm, <laughs> that's very <laughs> little help and I apologize um we use we use shopify as far as our website 
um, you know, and, and Shopify is super good to work with hemp growers. Um, but that middleman, that merchant is, uh, oh, wow. Again, maybe I can get that information for Janine and she can, she can shoot it out in an email or something. Um, but because yeah, it's, it's a rough road to hope. And I will try to get, to get, uh, his specific information to let, to let Janine, let everybody know. For sure. And people are, are mentioning that, um, you know, in the chat too. So we'll, we'll try to get some of these answers to you and we'll go through this chat and Katie, that can be one of the things that you do to, to get back with speakers and see if they've gotten some of those answers. Okay. Well, that's really great. Um, if we don't see any more questions right now, is that right, Katie? Um, there was one more that I thought um, might be good. Um, do you have any thoughts on Delta 8? <laughs> we are actually in the Delta 8 market right now. Um, we, it, it's, it's new, it's new, and we actually got into it probably um, five or six weeks ago. Now, I, I, it's, it's, I haven't, as far as the pros and cons versus something like epilepsy, I don't know, you know, how, how it works. I know, it, you know, CB, I don't think Delta 8 is a, is a big beneficiary for epilepsy, but um, it's something new, you know, it, it's something new, like I say, I mean, but it has so many benefits as far as, you know, the CBN or the CBG that they can, you know, when they can twist that, those, those processors that can take it to that stage and, and get that, that CB, I mean, as far as the benefits, I, I mean, there's, there's just so many benefits to D8, there is, that aren't in CBD, and there's so many in CBD that aren't in D8, but I think D8 is a huge, I, I think it's going to, it's another, I, listen, personally, I think God put hemp on this earth for a reason, I, I do, I think God put stuff on this this earth to, for us humans to be sustainable self-sustainable you know it's just a f figuring out how to get whatever's in there out and, and using that for you know that that's my personal opinion so i, I there's I, I we're in the market for da and i think it's a, i think it's a good thing i don't know if that answered the question okay thank you and i'm just i am not a regulatory person um, you know, we're with NC State, we don't do that part, but I just want you to know at the last Hemp Commission meeting that D8 was discussed mm -hmm. and the legality of it, it is really gray. So just, just be no, aware yeah. of that. I like people to know when they're walking on that line. So yeah, it's, it's, a line. It, 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 it's a gray area. And I mean, if you're gonna, I, you know, we're gonna strike while the iron's hot, you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know, but yeah, it's it's definitely a fine line. Yep. So hopefully in the next year we're going to get a lot of this straightened out with the yes. FDA and yes. everybody else. 